Hey, this is a gaming tutorial, so obviously I'm going to start the video too early and make you watch as I log into the game. Just kidding, this is with no filler, and we're going to get straight to it. My last video was a little bit long, so this time we're getting back to my roots of the only two videos I had before that, and it's going to be a lot shorter. Although I'm speaking to you from the distant past when this game is still in beta, beta! everything in this video will work after the game gets remastered. In this video, I'm trying to answer the question, what's the best way to get rich fast in this game? Well, just like in real life, the quickest way to get rich is to find yourself a sugar daddy or sugar mama. But if that's not an option, the easiest way to get rich is by finding certain items and trading them. The game uses gold as its currency, but gold is practically worthless, and you shouldn't waste your time trying to stockpile it like Scrooge McDuck. So when I say rich, I'm talking about having items that are in high demand by other people playing the game, or items that are top tier for your characters. There isn't a single best way to get rich, but in my opinion, there are a few quick suggestions that will really shorten the time it takes for you to get powerful characters in this game. And I'll give you a roadmap for how to get there. If you're poor or starting out with nothing, there are two characters I would argue are the best for getting rich. Those are a sorceress using mostly cold skills like Blizzard, and a paladin using Blessed Hammer, known as a Hammerdin. Honestly, if you're new to the game, pick whatever character looks the most awesome to you. There are so many great options, and it's a game. Do whatever you have fun doing. But I have fun being rich because it means I have better gear for the competitive scene when I duel other players. So I usually start off new seasons with a Blizzard Sorceress or a Hammerdin. I'm in the process of making tutorials for both of these, but these videos take me forever to make. So quick version is, both of these characters have their strengths and weaknesses. The Sorceress's biggest advantage is she naturally learns Teleport at level 18. And this lets you just shortcut through the labyrinths, go straight to the bosses and kill them. This alone arguably makes the Sorceress a slightly better starter character than the Hammerdin for our purposes because it saves so much time. Also, the Sorceress has a lot of cheap gear options that greatly boost magic finds. This stat increases your chances of finding awesome items. I'll explain that more in a minute. Her biggest weakness is, on the highest difficulty, she struggles in a lot of places because there are so many things there that are immune to her cold attacks. Apparently, the Minions of Hell have a vaccination program that works really well. Eventually, you can bypass this immunity problem when you get rich enough to afford this weapon to equip on your mercenary, because it has an aura that powers up sorceress attacks and breaks a lot of those immunities, especially lightning. So I'd recommend switching to lightning abilities when you get that weapon. You could also get around the immunity problem by making her be a hybrid sorceress that uses cold and lightning or fire skills, but that would weaken the amount of damage you could do. Your cold attacks would be less frosty, your lightning attacks less electric, in your fire attacks, they will be spicy meatballs of sadness. Therein lies the big trade-off of this game. You can be awesome at one thing, but get punished for it in some places late in the game. Or you can be mediocre at multiple things and just take longer to do stuff. If you're poor and trying to get rich, you want a character that kills things fast. So I'd say the best strategy is to go full Elsa and stick with the cold skills only. If you max out Blizzard and its synergies, you'll have epically high damage, so you can quickly kill Enderil and Mephisto over and over, and they can drop some good items. Certain things will only drop in certain places, so a great strategy is to clear out places where anything can drop. This is known as a level 85 area, and there are only a handful of them in the game. Unfortunately, most of those places have monsters that are immune to cold. But as a Blizzard Sorceress, you can still clear out ancient tunnels, so I recommend doing that. For comparison, the Hammerdin can go to a lot more areas because he uses Blessed Hammer, which does magic damage, and not many monsters are immune to that. Also, he's a little harder to kill, and he can put on some cheap gear, and then without any help, he can kill the Ubers, which are the hardest mega bosses in the game. The last of these bosses always drops a torch, which can be one of the most valuable and overpowered things you can find. Honestly, Hammerdins are good at almost everything without even trying. But for our purposes, his biggest weakness is that he doesn't naturally learn teleport so you're going to have to go the long way around until you get his ultimate armor, the Enigma, which gives him teleport. You can't build the Enigma until you get the High Rune's jaw and bear, which can take many hours to find, but I'll tell you how to do that in a minute. In my opinion, those are the two best characters for getting rich, so how should you use them? You need to beat the game in normal and nightmare modes before you start seriously trying to grind and get rich, because the best items drop in hell mode. A lot of loot drops in this game, and that can get overwhelming when you're trying to figure out what stuff will make you rich. The short, oversimplified version is, some specific gold and yellow items are always valuable, high runes and certain rune words are always valuable, and uber quest items are always valuable. You can get those by getting high magic finds, by clearing out the best loot places, and by farming the ubers and keys, respectively. Early on, the sorceress is typically better at magic finding than a hammerdin, but the hammerdin is better at getting runes and uber items. For magic finding, the strategy is to kill bosses while wearing high magic find gear. 
A lot of people get tunnel vision and try to get the highest magic find possible. But if you look at this chart, you see that as you get higher magic find, it becomes less and less useful for those gold and yellow items. No matter what, the more stuff you kill, the more stuff you find. So magic find is not as important as being able to kill stuff fast. Magic find also has no effect on the amount or quality of runes we find. Quick recap. Runes are little stones that monsters randomly drop. There are 33 different ones and they have a pecking order. The lowest ones drop all the time and the highest ones are some of the rarest items in the game. Since gold is practically worthless, these rare high runes are effectively the game's trading currency when you play online. How rare are they? Well, your odds are best in those level 85 places I showed you, and your chances vary based on the type of monsters there, and on how many people are in the game. But to give you a ballpark, you'd expect less than 1 out of 1000 runes to be ohm or higher, and that's just in the places where it's possible for them to drop in the first place. Why did they make it like this? Well, I have this theory that it happened in Blizzard headquarters many years ago when they were coming up with runes. Are the customers spending enough of their free time agonizingly grinding away at our game? Actually, I think we can make them suffer a lot more. I have this idea for a game called World of War. I'm talking about Diablo 2. Remember when we decided it should take countless hours to find some of these runes we are adding? Yeah? Well, let's make it so you can't make the best stuff unless you spend hours getting the rarest ones. Won't this make the hunt for high runes so painful that people set up AI programs to play the game instead, and then sell the items they find for real money, creating an artificial black market economy that we can't profit from until we release a sequel to this game and build the economy directly into it, and then later take it out because of all the backlash? Why don't you take the rest of the day off? Well, all I was trying to say is, I'm fully on board, let's do it. And so, high runes came to be added to Diablo 2. I don't think Blizzard will get mad at me for that. I'm basically here peddling their product for free. Anyway, don't let my Microsoft Paint artwork get you down, because there is hope. If more people join the game, the monsters get stronger, and in Hell difficulty, your chance of finding high runes goes up by quite a bit. The amount of players also helps a lot with the chance of finding high runes in chests. There's a place in Act 3 called Lower Kurast, which has a half dozen large chests really close to the waypoint. These chests can drop up to a bear room. This is a great option if you're playing single player offline because you can make the game think there are 8 players in the game. But I play online on Battle.net and you can't do that there, and the maps change every time you make a new game, so lure crew rest runs are not a great strategy for finding runes online unless you're playing with a bunch of people. You can also combine 2 or 3 of the same rune in your cube, sometimes with a specific gem, to get the next highest rune, but you have to be on ladder to combine the higher ones, and you'd have to do that a lot to get the highest runes. The Countess in Act 1 almost always drops some runes, but she doesn't drop the highest ones and the Hellforge quest is guaranteed to give at least one rune, but this can only be done once in Hell mode for each character. There are some people who rush other players through the game in exchange for their Hellforge, but it doesn't drop the highest ones either. So the takeaway is, the best way to get high runes is to clear out those high level areas, and you're going to do that a lot, so you want to do it fast. Why do people like runes so much? Well, each rune adds a particular stat when you put it into a socketed item, and if you put certain runes in a specific order, you get those stats plus a bunch of extra bonuses. This is called a rune word. Some rune words roll the dice on their stats. For instance, the rune word Heart of the Oak can have 30 to 40 resistance when you make it. A perfect 40 is worth way more than the runes that were used to make it, because people in this game are obsessed with having perfect gear. They think it gives them an edge when they're dueling, so making rune words and trading them can be a great way to get a lot of value. D2 Resurrected is going to have a whole category of games you can join just to negotiate and trade gear with other players. The trading scene is one of the things I love most about this game. Much like real life, you can get really lucky, or you can get completely ripped off, so you should be careful. If you're new to the game, it's hard to know which items have real trade value. But there's a website dedicated to the Diablo 2 trading market where a lot of trades go down, and just browsing it can help you get a feel for the value of things. I'm not sure if I'll get in trouble for mentioning this website by name, but it rhymes with D2J Espy. Honestly, trading deserves its own video, which I might make eventually. But again, the main things traders want are specific gold and yellow items, high runes, rune words, and uber quest items. You can also get a lot of value by saving armors and weapons that you would put runes into. You want to make sure the title of these is gray, so you can put rune words into it. When people need these, they usually overpay. And here's a list of some of the good ones. I should also mention that you can cheaply craft some valuable items in your cube, like these recipes. The caster amulet is by far the best, and you can make a 220 amulet, but it will take a lot of tries and you need to be a certain level before you can craft the best stuff. So crafting is not the greatest way to spend your time and energy. A very mathematically reliable way to get rich is to farm ubers, because 100% of the time they drop a charm called Hellfire Torch, which is one of the most overpowered and valuable items in the game. 
To do the Uber event, you start by killing these three bosses over and over in hell mode. They each have a different key, and it's something like a 10% chance for them to drop it when they die. So you want to get three of each key, or nine keys total, then go to town in Act 5 and create three red portals by combining those keys in your cube. There's a mega boss in each of these portals with an astronomical amount of hit points, and they heal fast, so you really need to switch into gear with the stats Crushing Blow, Chance to Cast Life Tap, and Cannot Be Frozen. You're going to need to get in their face and whack away at him. You should not try to do this with the Sorceress because she swings weapons slowly. However, Paladins are best suited to kill Ubers because all they need is one point into Smite and one point into Fanaticism, and then they can attack with Smite up to four times per second. I'll cover this in depth in my next video. Each of the mega bosses in those portals drops an organ. You combine those organs and it opens a portal to Uber Tristram, where you fight the mega versions of Mephisto, Diablo, and Bale. The last one you kill drops a torch. On Battle.net Ladder, an unidentified torch can usually trade for one of the lesser high runes, or somewhere in that ballpark. If you do identify it, you're hoping it has close to 20 attributes and 20 resistances, because those are worth many high runes. Paladin torches are generally the most valuable, followed by sorceress torches. A 2020 Paladin torch is the best drop you can get here and it's worth an absurd amount, probably dozens and dozens of high runes. I don't know, I just keep stuff if it's that good. But even if you don't do ubers, key sets and organ sets can be traded pretty easily. So hopefully all that will help you reduce the time it takes for you to get the best stuff in this game. As a quick recap, when I play with a sorceress, I kill Andariel in Act 1, clear out Ancient Tunnels in Act 2, kill Mephisto in Act 3, and then repeat. On my hammered in, I clear out Chaos Sanctuary, kill Bale, kill the key bosses, and sometimes do cow level. Then when I get enough keys, I do ubers and get torches. No matter what character you're playing, I would advise going to areas on this list where nothing is immune to you, and killing as many monsters and mini-bosses there as you can quickly. Then you can find high runes, find great stuff for your characters, and trade it for even better stuff. And that's how you become rich in this game. Thank you for joining me as I untangle this wonderfully complex game. I'll see you soon for the next one.